in this tutorial, and as you can see in the next one, because this is the first, I'm going to talk about realism. Realism is one of the central problems in philosophy. I'm just going to talk about realism, but also the criticism of realism, the anti-realist camps, and there are different forms of anti-realism. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the relativist kind of anti-realism. And relativism is, of course, opposed to absolutism, as you can guess. So realism, in a sense, it's an absolutist philosophy. So this is what we're going to talk about. Now, what is, what is realism about? Let's take a look at our picture. We've done it many times now. This guy, he's our knower. He tries to know something about reality here, about reality, and so this must ring a bell. Okay, this must have something to do with realism, and yes, it does. So with his thinking, or with his mind, he tries to access reality. He tries to gather, acquire knowledge of reality. Now, what is a realist? A realist is, first of all, because there are actually two parts, two elements of the definition of realism, two elements of a definition or two kinds of realism. We'll see about that. The first element is that a realist believes that there is a reality. You could have guessed that. A reality which exists independent of our thinking. And this is important. Independent. Independent of our thinking or of our mind. Independent of our mind. This means that when we think about a table, um, there is more than this table which is in our mind. There is a real table. And we didn't just invent it. It's not just something that our mind created or constructed. An anti-realist will say, yes, re real reality does not exist independent of our mind. For instance, this table does not in exist independent of our mind. It is just a construction of our mind. This is one element, and it's in a sense a metaphysical element. Remember what metaphysics was about. Physics or ontology, it was about the being of things, the existence, the real existence of things. And so, if you claim that, re that something exists for real, for instance a table, or that there is some r real reality, reality is real, there is some reality independent of our, of our mind, this, then that is a metaphysical claim. It's a metaphysical claim. You claim something of stuff that is really the case. And metaphysics will contrast it with a kind of epistemological claim. Epistemological claim. Second element will be epistemological. Epistemology refers to knowing, the theory of knowing. And a realist, secondly, will believe that um, our thinking corresponds to this reality. And this is not really the same as one. Our thoughts correspond with the reality. In other words, we're able to, to bridge the gap, let's say, between thinking and being. Um, this stuff, if we have an idea of what a table is like, for instance, that really corresponds to reality. And this is not the same as one, because what did one say? One said, well, stuff really exists independent of our thinking. For instance, a table, it really exists. But it doesn't say anything about our knowledge. It could be that we're completely, or that, that people don't even exist, or that they're completely wrong about tables, whatever. Um, one is just a metaphysical claim. It's purely about this. The second claim is epistemological. It says, well, we have these beliefs about things, and they re they're, they're right, they're true, they're really about this reality, this reality which exists independent of our mind. So there's a lot of mind going on, right? But it's not that difficult. So in our minds, we have an idea, say, uh, that, that's what people in number two say, right? We have an idea of what a table is like, and this corresponds with the real table 
which exists independently of our ideas. The point is, the reality of this table is not constructed, it's not dependent on this idea. Okay. That is, um, that is what realism and anti-realism is all about. So anti-realism just being the denial of one of these two claims of uh, realism. And uh, I said that you can interpret them as two elements of one definition, like most realists will be both. But you, so yeah, as I said, technically you can also be one without two, and then you could say there are different kinds of realism. You got metaphysical realism and you got epistemological realism. Anyway, if you say realism, um, actually you always have to wonder realism about what? Here we've been talking about a table, about the reality of a table. But you can be a realist about anything, right? You can be a realist about mathematical ideas, the fact that, for instance, 4 plus 2 equals 6. This is a universal truth, and some people would think that it really exists independently of our thinking. And then I'm not just talking about four apples and, and two apples, which make up six apples, apples exist, but, but also this mathematical truth and all mathematical theorems, etc. Some people um, yeah, think that th these things really exist and therefore they are realists about, about mathematics. Or God. Some people are realists about God. Some people are anti-realists. Or um, the fundamental particles in physics, quarks, atoms, molecules, etc. Some people will say this stuff really exists, other people will say no. Um, these are purely constructions of the mind. The anti realists are going to say um, it's not that we have ideas and theories in our minds of what these fundamental particles look like, and there's also something in reality which corresponds to that. No, anti-realists deny that there is such a thing. This is an important debate in philosophy of science. If you're, if you're a realist about these uh, fundamental particles in physics, for instance, um, philosophers of science will call you a scientific realist. Scientific realist. And the scientific realism debate is a very important one in philosophy. Okay, now, um, if you are, let's say, an epistemological realist and believe that our thought can really have access to this reality, in a sense you believe in absolute truth. Absolute truth. You believe that when I think about these particles or about tables, my beliefs are absolutely truth or true relativists deny exactly this so absolute truth this, this kind of means that this other guy here who also thinks about tables and about micro particles etc has access to these same to the same reality and exactly this idea that different people have access through, through the same reality and are thus able to um, acquire absolutely true beliefs is denied by relativists. Relativists say that um, we cannot have absolute truth, but people have their own truth. So this guy here, he, um, he thinks about tables in such a way, this guy here, just kind of other other ideas about how tables look like, etc. So this is fundamentally different, and in a sense, they create their own reality. There is no reality independent of our thinking. All reality is in our thinking. It's in our heads. The table, it's just an idea that we have. The quarks, it's just an idea that we have. God, it's just an idea that we have, etc. Okay, um, this and moreover, it's just an idea, and these, these ideas differ, differ from person to persons. Relative, relativists believe that 
different people have different ideas about things. This is important. Because you can actually think that, okay, stuff is just in the mind, but everybody thinks the same. But relativists don't think that. They, they think that everybody thinks in a different way. Okay, um, relativism, again, you should wonder, relativism about what? About what? Here we have been talking about, um, about knowledge, about things, and if you're a relativist, for instance, about knowledge concerning tables or elementary particles, then we're going to call you a conceptual Relativist. Conceptual relativists believe that different people have different conceptual schemes. That is, they see things in a different way. Conceptual schemes. This guy, he has his own concepts and his own uh, principle on, by which he thinks, and this guy has other principles. Um, but there are other kind of relativists, re relativisms, um, not just with regard to our knowledge of reality, but you can also be a moral relativist. This is probably something that you've heard of, moral relativism. In a sense, it's also about truth, but about moral truths. Moral relativists say there's no such thing as an absolute moral truth. So... Uh, the fact that slavery is wrong, for instance, it might be true in certain societies, it might be true in certain times, but it's not true everywhere. It, the truth differs from place to place and from time to time. If you believe that truth differ from place to place or from culture to culture, say, then you're a cultural relativist. If you believe that um, truth different, differs from time to time, you're a historical relativist. And you can believe you can be a, rel uh, a cultural relativist with regard to morals, right? And believe that moral truth differs in, in different uh, cultures or you can be a historical relativist with regard to moral truth. But the same goes for <clears throat> Not these moral ideas, but these beliefs about reality, about science, for instance. You can be a cultural relativist about science, and different, different cultures have different sciences or different truth, different scientific truths. Different times have different scientific truths. <coughs> Once upon a time, the earth was flat. That is a possibility. Okay, so, and I think we've been talking for quite a while now on realism and anti-realism, and I'm going to leave it 